Hey everybody, this is Dave from AskUncleDave.com. Today I have for you the Azustor AS3204T. This is a NAS storage unit, and what it is is a uh, pretty much a computer or a box, a storage, uh, that you put in multiple drives and make create one gigantic volume. Uh, you could set it up in different ways where you can have parity or a copy of the data spread out over the four uh, drives. And you pretty much access this over your Wi-Fi and your internet. Uh, it doesn't connect to a computer with a wire uh, like a traditional hard drive. You access everything through a browser and some software on your computer that allows you to connect uh, uh, via the cloud as well as uh, via software uh, to this uh, drive, to this uh, Azustor NAS um, network attached storage uh, s with software uh, that they've created and they also have an app store so you can uh, download apps to do different things. Uh, you could use this as a, a media server, you can use this as mass storage of course, a backup server, surveillance, a whole bunch of things that you can do with this. Now. This is not my first Azure store that I've owned. This is the Azure store AS 304T. And I got this about two years ago. I've reviewed other NAS units and I ended up returning them or selling them because they didn't hold a candle to the Azure store company. Now, Azure store was nice enough to send me their newest uh, AS 3204T and it's pretty much double the speed as far as processor goes it has a quad core processor opposed to the do core processor that had two years ago and it also has two gigabytes of ram opposed to the one gigabyte uh, of ram on the older unit but using the for the last two years the azu store with my four three terabyte western digital red drives these drives are made for uh, the NAS uh, units. Um, I have had no problem streaming media uh, over my home network or even over my LTE and 4G to my mobile phone or to my computer and I had no stuttering. Uh, it plays things efficiently. Uh, we get some great videos on the Apple TV and things like that. I can only imagine that with the more powerful unit we're gonna get a lot better quality uh, this can handle 4K video uh, opposed to the 2K video that we had on the previous NAS. So we're going to pretty much go over the, some comparisons, some changes that they made. And I think that all of the changes they made uh, just makes it a totally better unit. And I'm going to be happy using this for the next couple of years uh, to come uh, as my main server, uh, my main storage. And uh, let's get on with the video. Let me show you the box a little bit. So we pretty much have uh, the picture of the box here and it tells you some of the specs. I'll have more pictures up on my website uh, so that you could check out these for yourself if you're interested in this NAS unit. Uh, you know me and my uh, channel, we talk about cable cutting all the time and how to get media and things like that. And for a person like me and my channel, and you know the way I am, uh, and I recommend the Azu store and use it for the last couple of years, you're going to probably be convinced that this is probably the best NAS uh, that you can get. Uh, so we're going to go over some more of the box uh, with the, on the website, of course. But let me show you. Now, see, I have four brand new 6 terabyte uh, Western Digital Red Drives, and that's going to equal up to 24 terabytes of storage. Now, if you set it to read 5, you get about 16 to 18 terabytes uh, with parity, you know, so you can back up some of your stuff. If one of the drive fails, you just replace it with a new drive and it rebuilds. And you could do this as a hot swap where you don't even have to turn off the NAS. You could just take the bad one out, put the good one in. I haven't had any problem. Uh, I actually bought four of these used and one of them was actually faulty and I didn't lose any of my data that I transferred over from my old NAS. Now my old NAS, I had four three terabyte drives which gave me 12 terabytes uh, and I with RAID 5 I got about 8 terabytes of storage and I'm pretty much full because you know me I download a lot of movies and I store everything and this way I have a large collection to access 
with my computer, my mobile phone, my Apple TV, my Android boxes and things like that. So this has double the quad core. It has the two gigabytes of RAM. They made a lot of great changes. Um, I also got the remote with it. Uh, the remote and they have a mobile app, which is really great. You can connect this to your TV, both of these. They have an HDMI that you connect and you use their um, media center, uh, in a sense. Uh, they call it a Zooster portal. And you basically can run Kodi uh, and you know all these different apps, uh, including a browser, onto your TV screen so that you can actually have this as uh, replacing your computer as a media center. Um, you could use Plex with this. That's what I use. I use Infuse and I access my NAS and it's, you know, really, really, you know, the best way to go when you have a large movie and TV collection as well as files and things like that. So there's a lot of great security. Uh, there's actually been a big, great uh, security update with encryption and things like that. But we're going to go over the software and we're going to go over setting up the drives and all that stuff. And we're going to do all that in the next couple of videos. I just wanted to let you know uh, that, uh, you know, these videos are coming. And let's look at the back of each unit. So we'll turn the older one, the two year old one, which is really not that old. Uh, it still works great. I didn't need anything else. I just needed more capacity. Now I got to tell you that they've changed a bunch of things. So this NAS here has some bays that you use screwdriver and you, you screw these bays in and you actually uh, you know, screw them on uh, to the, uh, the sled. And then basically you pop them in and you lock them in place and you know you have individual, individual drives that you could pull out and replace. But they changed all that. They actually make it so that you can take the entire cover off and you use pretty much thumb screws in order to access inside. But let's talk about what around, let's go around the unit and I'll talk to you about it. So uh, the older unit had the power supply built in to the box itself. Uh, but the new one has a power brick that's separate so that now they can create it to make it smaller and stay cooler and run more efficiently that way. Uh, they both come with ethernet cables, of course. Uh, it's got the fast uh, Ethernet port here. It's got the HDMI on both of them. They both have the latest HDMI. This unit has um, one USB in the front and it has two USB 3.0s in the back here. This one only has uh, the 2.0s uh, and it has only one uh, 3.0 USB in the back, but there's also one in the front. Now the one in the front, now this fan is the, is pretty much the same, but in the, the one in the front that they took away, I'll show you. They took away this access button. This is actually a button around the USB in the front here. They also got another USB in front and they got the indicator lights as well as the IR because you can use the remote. So they took away this one touch button here. The, uh, it's not necessary anymore because now you do it with software. Uh, you basically plug any hard drive in here, not just a camera thumb drive or whatever. Uh, you, you, don't, you can lock it down. That's what was good about it in the past, but you really, I really never used it, and pretty much they must have found that it's pretty much obsolete because you're gonna physically connect it to, and you know, pressing the button, you know, that's probably not something they really need. So there's a, there was a power button here, but now the power button uh, is gone and let's go back to the back and I'll show you let's go to the back here now uh, before you couldn't take the case off unless you were doing some repair work and stuff like that but now in order to put the drives in and to also access inside of this NAS you pull off these thumb screws so basically you don't need a screwdriver anymore uh, like you did in the past where you have to screw into the sleds of the drive holders uh, you basically can just pop it off there's a power button back here now on the uh, NAS instead of in the front which is good because it keeps people from bumping it. if you have it up on a shelf you have to actually reach behind so now the NAS instead of it being slit the drives being slid in from the front you basically pop the whole cover off so we pop the cover off completely and we'll 
put that aside like that and I'll show you inside, okay? So here's inside of the NAS now. And basically what you're gonna do is just take the drive the way it comes out of the bag uh, when you buy it new and you basically just slide it right in. So you could slide the drive right in. It has a, a little bit of a sled in there and you basically push it in and push down and you're pretty much done. You put all four of those drives in place. The screws on the side, I'll show you on this one. There are some screw holes on the side of every hard drive you get. And there's holes that you can just put your thumb screws right back in here. So basically this is all one sled. So everything gets popped in here. You put all the uh, 16 screws in. It comes with more so that you can uh, put more in there. And now let me show you a little bit of the inside. Now on the older NAS, you really can't access the inside of your NAS as well as you can on this one here. Uh, we have the, connect, the SATA connectors there and its board. Then we have the processor. We have the fan back here. We have a battery uh, for the, the clock. And there's the cooling uh, uh, you know, um, grill so that you, it cools off the processor and you basically can pretty much get to a lot of this stuff inside here you see more you get to access more you can clean out better uh, your fan when it gets dusty if you have it in a dusty environment and uh, you know I just love it I mean the only downside of not having a sled that you slide out is that when you do need to replace the drive you have to shut down the unit pretty much and take apart this take the cover off and then start accessing the drives back and forth. It's hard to do a hot swap when you have to take a cover off. That's the only downside that I found uh, with the new hardware, uh, the way they have it. But it's kind of easy. You kind of can pop it off a little bit, even when it's running, even when it's plugged in and be able to swap out these. Uh, I really don't think we're gonna have a problem with discharge or any kind of uh, electrical shock or anything like that. But I do recommend if you pop off this cover here that you kind of shut down the unit. So you do a cold swap instead of a hot swap. Uh, it's probably not a problem. The drives are gonna last a long time, especially if you're using red NAS drives uh, like I am. So basically there's not much changes but there's enough changes to be able to warrant this part in the video um, so I'm happy to say that it's much much more lighter uh, it's a couple of pounds lighter like say this is seven pounds this is only like four pounds it's very light uh, so carrying it around is not a problem as well if you needed to take it from the office to another office uh, which you probably didn't need to do because you can access it over the internet through your cloud they give you a cloud service that you can access everything so let's put all the drives in let's hook both of them back up uh, we're pretty much done with the older unit if you have any questions on it feel free to ask or you go ahead and watch those videos i have the link in the description and as well as the cards up on top uh, but let's really go over this and we'll talk about it now as far as software changes uh, they call their firmware or their gui uh, adm and the adm that runs this is pretty much the same. There are some additions, some apps that you can only use on here or you, that you can't use on here. And it's like three or four apps we're talking about, uh, like Kodi. This uses XBMC instead of Kodi. And the Azusta portal is a little bit different. This one is much more upgraded. You can even use Spotify on it and things like that. So we'll go more into that as we go through each of the videos. Now in the comments, I want you to comment and to ask me questions because I need to know what to make my next couple of videos about. And while you're at it, please hit that like button, subscribe, please. And you're going to see a lot of great videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.